Hey friends, this is Rachel Picard, and this is another episode, episode seven of the Soul CEO Podcast. And today we're gonna to be talking and actually diving into a coachable moment that I had with a friend on Facebook Messenger last night. And I wanna share with you guys the real raw advice that I gave her where I truly believe that she was steeped in self deception. She was lying to herself about what she wanted to do, what she truly wanted in life, and why that was hurting her from accomplishing her goals. If you guys are just checking out this podcast, welcome. I want to thank you guys so much. It's been a few days, a few episodes, and we're already trending. I got an email today. We're already number 61 in the world for entrepreneur podcasts. How freaking cool is that? Hello. Glory be to God. I'm just so grateful. So if you guys are digging this, please tap that five stars, smash that subscribe button, and leave a review. Make sure you leave a review. Today, I want to give a special shout out to a subscriber, and I want to just share her review uh, on this Apple podcast. And she said, always on point and glorifying the Lord. This is Andrea Shaw, five stars. I followed Rachel for a long time and love her drive. Over the past few years, her love for the Lord and business and truth continue to encourage and inspire my spirit. And I'm incredibly thankful she started this podcast. You'll want to listen. Thank you so much, Andrea. I appreciate that. And I shouted you out on social media. So maybe you uh, caught that. And guys, if you leave a review, chances are I might also shout you out. So let me know. And you can even even take a screenshot of that review. You can tag me and I will repost it because I want to make sure that we create this tribe together. All right. I told you guys there was a coachable moment. I'm going to call this girlfriend, Laura. We're just going to talk, call her Laura. I want you to pay attention to the words. Words matter. How we use our words, what we tell ourselves, they matter. Okay. So Laura messaged me out of nowhere. She's not on my team. She's seeking some advice. She goes, Rachel, I know what to do. I just keep sabotaging myself and not putting myself in an opportunity to discover new distributors or customers for that matter. I'm a rank five with a rank four volume and I'm desperately longing for people to run with. I'm desperately longing for people to run with. I responded verbatim. Well, it's not desperately longing then. (laughs) This was the moment I was like, oh crap, there goes Laura. She's going to lose it, block. She's going to hate me. Oh boy, oh me, oh my. But I went out, I'm like, that's not desperately longing. If it was despair, right, you wouldn't be sabotaging your prospecting, right? Right? She's like, I know what to do, but, I, and like, but I'm not doing it. I'm sabotaging myself. I desperately want people. I'm like, it's, it's incongruent. Your words are not matching. It does not compute. I don't get it. And then she responded. Thankfully, she didn't block me. She wasn't upset. <laughs> Yes, words matter. She goes, I'm not sabotaging myself unless no action is sabotage. (laughs) And at this point, I'm like a ravenous wolf. I'm like, put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. This is good. I like this. Okay, I got some good stuff for her. I told her, yes, it's it's beyond just words. It's self-awareness. It's realizing that we are lying to ourselves instead of just flat out telling ourselves the truth. No action is sabotage, Laura, because your excuses or the fear that you feel is outweighing your desire to get back to rank five and beyond. And then she proceeded to tell me like this massive story about her big run to this rank, that she had done a big run in the past. She knew exactly what to do. She was following the system, how many meetings exactly per month. Like she had it broken down. Like, this is what I was doing every single month. And in fact, she said that they offered a promo for like a free iPad at a convention. And she had five new distributors signed up before she got on the plane to leave. Laura said, I know how to do it. So I asked, why don't you do it? (laughs) All right, guys, we're here. Episode seven. Y'all are starting to see how unbelievably profound I am as a coach. (laughs) Okay. Uh, I cannot wait to continue to disappoint you. Anywho, she said, why don't I do it? I said, why don't you do it? She goes, why don't I do it? Dot, dot, dot. Yes. What the heck is my deal? And then she goes, oh, wise one, please give me the answer. The, oh, the, the wise one really got me. I was laughing. I was like naturally being so hilarious. I'm like, girl, the answer is within. Love, Yoda. <laughs> the answer is within. Like, Why don't I do it? Oh, why is one giving me? It's in. It's in. See, here's the truth. Everyone wants success. 
this was last night. I just hopped off of a coaching call with one of the top leaders in my team. And she's um, kind of on that cusp of just, you know, on a run to hit six figures. And she was sharing how nobody on her team, and she's full of light and love and grace, and she's got phenomenal emotional intelligence. And she's like, but nobody on my team really wants it as bad as I do. Um, And then in the second breath, she'll say, they all say they want it. They all say that they want it. They all tell me like, and she goes, I'm so, I'm starting to get deflated because I've been working with them. I've been holding their hand. I've been running with them. I've been pouring into them for years and yet they're not where I am. Why is that the case? How can I make them better? And we walk through several different scenarios of recognizing different types of distributors. But I told her, it's like, you cannot listen to what they say. You watch what they do. See, Laura told me that she wants to have success. She desperately was longing for somebody to run with, right? But at the same time, she's also saying, I am not putting myself in positions to find new leaders. Well, that's incongruent. Everyone wants success. Everyone wants the car. Everyone wants the house. Everyone wants at least the lifestyle. They want the autonomy to do what they want, when they want, where they want, with who they want to do it with. Everyone wants the inner peace that comes from like the discipline of spiritual practices. They want the body that comes from working out and eating right. Everyone wants success. And I said, people are like, I would love to be where you're at. Rachel, I would love to be at your rank. I'd love to be at your rank. Okay, great. But are you willing to do what I've done to have what I have? Now, psychologists study this whole concept of self-deception. So their theory lies in the fact that our ego uses it as a tool, almost like a protection. And we deploy this like self-deception as a way to diffuse fear and anxiety that arise when, when we think who we are, or better yet, who we think we should be, comes in conflict with our reality. And this actually goes back to our previous episode, episode six, where we talked about leadership being an inside job. And truthfully, everything's an inside job. But we get we use a self-deception. We become so incongruent. We manufacture lies and excuses, and an excuse is just a well-planned lie. Danny Johnson. An excuse is just a well-planned lie. So we deploy these lies as a way to protect our ego so that we're not anxious and fearful when we aren't doing what we know we should do. When we say out loud that we want to be healthy, but yet we eat bonbons and ho-hos and order DoorDash every single night instead of meal prepping and doing cardio. You know, we, we, we sleep in instead of getting down on the treadmill, right? I had a conversation this week um, with one of my mentors. His name is Taylor Worry. If the name's at all familiar, he's the son of the great Eric Worry. And Taylor, in his own right, is a legend inside of network marketing and direct sales. And he's worked corporately uh, on the he's done, done he's worked in the field before. He was actually very successful in the field, but he's worked corporate pretty much his entire adult life. And uh, and I was thinking about fear and what stops leaders. And what stops anybody really from going out there and accomplishing their goals, but especially inside of network marketing. And I actually poised these questions to Laura. And I said, there's four major fears that we're going to feel that tend to hinder our success that that, um, can lead us to self-sabotage. Rejection, loss of esteem, success, and the fear of failure. So first is that fear of rejection. And, and rejection to me is very temporary. It's like, it's like, ooh, ouch. It's like a burn, like, ooh, ah. And nearly half of salespeople admit that the greatest thing that holds them back from like either following up, closing, or asking for the sale in general is hearing the word no. Half, half. So if you're a pastor right now and you're looking to grow your flock and you're trying to teach your uh, your congregation to, you know, lightly evangelize or invite people to service on Sunday, realize that half of them, even if they're not salespeople, but we're all in sales, are terrified of the word no. They will do almost anything. They will make themselves so busy. They will play busy work. That's why so many, the average salesperson does 90 minutes of true work a day. Oh yeah, they might get paid for eight hours, possibly, potentially, if they're on a salary. But they're only doing about 90 minutes of true work. 
because we play office. We do anything to prevent us like, oh, we've got to protect the ego. The second greater fear is the fear, the loss of esteem, like the loss of social esteem. And this is much deeper. This is not as transactional as, as, transactional as rejection, right? This is almost more semi-permanent or permanent. It has that feeling, right? If I, I will not be approved, right? You know, this is, if I tell my family or my best friend that I'm doing this business and they don't like it, they might treat me differently forever, it might change the way we hang out every Saturday night. The loss of esteem, and especially in a tribal uh, way that we are, humans, we're, we're communal beings, we're tribal beings. We don't want to lose our space in the totem pole. We don't want to lose that esteem. The third great fear that holds us back is the fear of success. Like, what if I gave my all and it actually works? But what if I really just get lucky and then I'm exposed as a fraud? This is like imposter syndrome, if you've heard about that. Like, even though you've done the work to get where you are, you still feel like you're going to be found out that maybe possibly you just got lucky. What if I'm not qualified for success? What if I'm not prepared for it? What if I lose something dear to me because I've become successful? I had some very minor but real fears of success as I started making money. And one of them was I had a fear that everyone that I love would ask me for money. And that was something that was concerning to me. Now, I was able to kind of push past that, but I'll tell you guys, it was very real because guess what? When I started making money, guess what happened? Everyone I knew asked me for money and they still do. And I've had to work that out in different methods and and with coaching and strategies and things like that, right? And so that was a fear. And that, like sometimes those small things will actually hold somebody back from going and working their business because they have this concept that this, grandiose thing is going to be so much more painful than the current pain that they're in on the struggle bus. And then the fear of failure, number four, we fear that we will give every, this is the biggest one, that we're going to give everything we got to a goal. We're going to go all out. We're going to, we're just going to push for that aspiration and it still won't be enough. So it's so much easier to give ourselves reasons of why we failed than to truly give it our all and still not succeed. But how do we know? Like, how do we know? And guys, I'm just touching like a very, very shallow on the subject. Um, We can discuss this later, but I wanted to give you guys just this insight because I thought this conversation back and forth with Laura was so good. And I think that there are a lot of us right now that are submerged in like self-deception and self-sabotage. And you can know this by a couple of points. Like if you're seeking instant gratification, like, wow, that delivery pizza tasted a lot better than the salmon that I cooked last night that I was going to reheat that was a healthy meal. Or it's a lot more cozy and comfortable to put on my sweats in the morning and cuddle with my bulldog, which I used to do, instead of immediately putting on my Lululemon leggings and my Nike shoes and walking down to the basement and getting those steps in on the treadmill, right? Seeking instant gratification. Instead, you know, like it's it's much more comfortable uh, scrolling the scroll hole of Instagram or the reels or the TikToks than sitting after five, 10 or more hours of calls and work and obligations and chores and knocking out a YouTube video, or making some dials, or reaching out, or producing a podcast, right? Seeking instant gratification. If you're avoid getting the job done, I, I recommend a great book. If you if you tend to procrastinate, eat that cheese. Eat that cheese. I think it's Brian Tracy. It's very good. Um, saying yes to a lot of things that you don't want to do, as opposed to saying yes to the things that you know you should do. Let me say that again. If you're saying less to a lot of things that you don't really want to do, or maybe maybe like you do, but like, uh, but they're not serving your greatest aspiration and what God has called in your life, your your true calling. They're just distractions, but they allow you to stay busy enough. I have friends that pack their nights with every single possible, and this was kind of pre-COVID, but like every single possible thing with their kids. And what I truly believe, I truly believe it, that it is a, uh, a mechanism so that they can use the excuse that they are busy. And so they're deceiving themselves that they're busy 
because they know that they should be working on their business because it's their true business that's, that's going to get them out of their H-E double hockey sticks. It's going to get them out of their mediocrity. It's going to get them out of debt. It's going to get them back home with their kids or whatever it is. So you might be saying yes to a lot of things that are, you know, maybe fun or maybe not so fun. And you're like, I'm just really busy and you use that as an excuse. Another way we know that we're submerged in self-deception and self-sabotage is we drown in self-defeating thoughts. Words matter. Remember, we said that at the beginning, 15 minutes, words matter. So I kind of encourage you guys today to see and assess if you're lying to yourself. And if you say you want X, count the cost. Are you willing to do it? Like, you know what you want. And then dig deeper and ask yourself, why am I not going after it? Why am I not so maniacal after it? Is it really that important to me? Because if it is, I will move mountains to do it. And then follow up. Like, if there's a reason, if there's excuse, if there's a lie, if there's bondage, if there's self-defeating thoughts, if there's a repetitive pattern, then you got to ask yourself, is that serving me? Are these things that I'm using as a decoy? as a deflection, as a reason, as excuse, as a lie. Is it serving me? Is it going to serve me in 2021? Is it going to serve me and my family and my loved ones and my kids, like in my team to, to hang on to this excuse and reason of why I'm not where I'm meant to be or am I ready? Am I ready to toss it? Am I ready to burn it? Am I ready to flush it? Am I ready to bury it for good? It's up to you. You decide. Stop lying to yourself. Do not be self-deceived. Pay attention to your words and uh, go out and make it happen. We'll see you guys a little bit later. Thanks so much for listening and do me a favor and take a screenshot of this right now and go to social media, Instagram stories, tag me at Soul CEO or on Facebook at Rachel Picard. And I'd love to connect with you. And as always, rate and leave a review and share with your team or friends or family or your dog. I don't know, whatever. Like somebody gets excited about this. Uh, Pass it on. Love you guys. God bless.